So today we are talking about rate limiting your Next.js applications or your API endpoints using middleware functions, Vercel, KV storage, and Upstash. Now let's just start by understanding why you would need rate limiting in the first place. Now there is a link in the description to this article on Vercel where it walks you through the same steps as we are doing today, so you can check it out. Now as far as rate limiting, it ensures uptime for your service. So it protects your services from being overwhelmed by excessive requests. It can control your billing in terms of how much of compute you're using because of the requests. It prevents malicious users. Specifically, if you're building AI products that use large language models, these services, they are usually charged based on service. So you can protect yourself against DDoS attacks or malicious users. And also you can differentiate product usage based on different plans. So imagine your product has different plans. You can rate limit different plans or different tiers. For example, free users can have a limited number of requests per day or per whatever window you want to define. And then premium users can have a higher limit. Now, you probably know what Vercel is. We're going to use Vercel middleware through Next.js middleware, which is deployed as a middleware function in the edge runtime so it runs close to your users in the edge runtime we're going to use Vercel KV this is a durable Redis database which is a key value pair or JSON it allows you to store and read JSON very fast uh, we talked about the middleware functions and let's now talk about how to implement rate limiting with Vercel so Here's our few steps. The first step is to actually create a Vercel KV database. We're going to follow this quick start guide. Again, there's a link in the description. This is a documentation for the Vercel KV quick start. It walks you through creating a store, connecting to it via the dashboard and using the CLI and also connecting your project to your database. Now we need to install the Vercel KV. So let's go ahead and install this package let me just make this a smaller so let me copy this over here by the way this project that we have here the source code is again link in the description we are building on top of our next chat cn template there's a video on the channel explaining how we set up our next.js project i'm going to link it somewhere in the cart or in the description if you wanted to follow along and the next thing that we want to do is to install this vercel at SDK or CLI. Let's just get the Vercel as well. So the first package we installed was the Vercel KV. This is the storage. The second one is just the Vercel CLI. We're going to use this to connect to our Vercel account and pull our environment variables, which is necessary to connect to our Redis instance or to our Vercel KV instance. So let's clear this out. Go down to the first step is to create a KV database. So you need to navigate to the project that you want to add this database, select the storage tab, and then create a new KV instance. Give it a name, give it or select a region you want this to be deployed to, and then click create and continue. This is going to create that Redis instance and also creates the necessary environment variables that you can use to connect to your store. So let's go to our Vercel account. I am on this project that I have created. There is a storage tab, as you can see. I've already gone ahead and created the KV store, but the process is that you click on this create database. There's different database or storage solutions from Vercel, from the Edge config, the blob, which is for blob or images and videos, Postgres. This is a serverless Postgres database using Neon. I have a video on the channel talking about serverless Postgres and Neon. You can check it out. I'm going to link it in the description. And the last one is this KV, which is a durable Redis instance. You can click create. Now on the hobby plan, you can only create one database because I've already created this. I cannot create another one, but in the next page, it just asks you for the name of your database and the region, and you can click create. So I'm going to cancel this out. Once you follow those steps, you're going to end up on this dashboard where it tells you about the instance that was, that was created, the region it was deployed to, and the ways you can connect to your database using the CLI, using the Vercel KV package. It also gives you the local environment variables you need inside your project to be able to connect to your database. Now we're going to use the Vercel CLI tool to link our local project to this project and then pull down the environment variables momentarily, but 
you can also copy this code from here and manually copy it in your local environment variables. So let's go back. We created this database, review what was created. Now, one thing that you need to note is that if you go to your project settings now, uh, down in the environment variables, you can see these environment variables are now automatically created for you. And this is what we're going to pull down using the Vercel CLI. Now, this is, a, is talking about actually populating your store for some with some values. We're not going to do this because we're going to use uh, the API rate limiting package from Opstash. But as far as preparing your local project, you need your API URL and token to be able to connect to your KV database. And we're going to use the Vercel CLI tool and this is script to pull down the environment variable. So let's copy this and come back here. Before we are able to run this command, we first need to link this local project to a project in Vercel. So you would run Vercel link. This is going to connect to your accounts. I have two accounts. One is hobby, one is pro. So I'm going to select this one and then it automatically finds the project that I want to link to. So I'm going to select yes. And now they're linked. Now that I have linked the project, I can run this Vercel env pool. This is going to pull down our environments from our Vercel project. And you can specify what file you want to actually store this in. So I'm going to go with .env.local and hit enter. Now this is going to pull down our environment variables. So let me just go .env.local was created. I didn't have this file to begin with. And it just pulled down all of my environment variables that allows me to connect to my KV storage. So let's close this down. Next step is actually query your KV storage. This is if you have already populated it with some user data. If you haven't, the different examples using the Next.js app router, for example, we're going to get the KV instance from this package we installed. Assuming that you are inside of a route, you can just call this kv.hgetall and user me. This is what we've already populated inside of our storage and then send that response back. So this is reading from our storage and responding back. You can also create or connect to multiple KV stores. So you can use this create client function and pass in the specific URL and API token for that specific instance or storage. For example, we here have one for our users and another one for our products with different REST API URLs and tokens. And then we can set a response back actually reading from both of those instances. But this is not what we want to do. We want to rate limit our application. So we go back to this guide here. Now the next step is actually adding the Opstash rate limit package. This helps us implement an HTTP based rate limiting. We're going to use a middleware function that runs before every request that comes to our Next.js application, whether it's for pages or for our API endpoints. We're going to run this code before we are sending the response back. So let me just open up the application here and show you the middleware that we have and explain what we're doing here. So we're importing the next request and response from next server. We're getting the rate limit instance from Opstash rate limit package that you need to install. I've already installed this, so you can go ahead and install it yourself. And also this KV from our Vercel KV SDK that allows us to call and connect to our KV instance. Now we're going to create a new instance of this rate limit. We're going to pass our KV instance as our Redis storage. And for limiter, there are different limiting techniques that you can use here. We are using a sliding window that allows five requests per 10 seconds. I'm going to include links in the description for Opstash rate limiting package and different options that you have here. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we are using an IP based rate limiting that allows five requests per 10 seconds. Now for your middleware functions, if you're not familiar with middleware functions, I'm going to include a link in the description for a video that we have done, but you can export this config matcher that tells Next.js for what paths this middleware needs to actually run. We're setting to run it on our homepage. You can include your entire application or your API endpoints, whatever that suits your use case. Inside our middleware function, we are getting the IP of the incoming request and calling this rate limit dot limit IP, which in turn gives us back some response with success, limit, reset, and remaining status of this specific request. If it is successful, meaning 
that they haven't gone over the five requests per 10 second in the window that they are sending these requests. We're calling next response dot next, which is like the next function in Express, which handles the process to the next server to process the response. And if we are not successful, we're redirecting the user back to the forward slash blocked page. So this is all you need to do to intercept all of your requests because middleware functions, again, run before every request is processed. They run by default on the edge runtime. So they're pretty fast and they're close to the users. We are using Vercel KV, which is a Redis instance that is also very fast. So this is the best scenario for reading and writing to a fast storage from the edge runtime to be able to rate limit the incoming requests. Now with this out of the way, let's just start our development server. Let's open localhost. So this is our homepage, nothing special here, no specific routes, there's just this homepage. We're going to refresh the page, requesting this page a couple of times, which in turn is going to hit our rate limit cap and then send us to the block page. And the block page is just this page that says you've been blocked. So let's actually try this out. I'm going to refresh this page a couple of times. And there we have it. As you can see, we have been redirected to the blocked page where it tells us that we've been blocked because we have exceeded five requests in 10 seconds. Now, obviously you can use this inside your API endpoints. So instead of just running this inside of your middleware here, you could just run it on top of an API endpoint, or you can just have this match the API route over here. So a specific endpoint or all of your API endpoints by running this a star at the end. So there are different ways depending on your use case where you want to limit your users, whether it's your entire application or a specific page or your API endpoint, you can use this package together with the Vercel KV for a fast read and write to a Redis storage and then limit the usage of your application. And that's a wrap for this video, folks. We talked about rate limiting Next.js applications using the middleware function Vercel KV storage, which was really a Redis instance. And then the Opstash rate limiting package that allows us to choose the strategy we want to limit the usage. In our case, was a sliding window. So in 10 seconds, we only allowed five requests. We can have different pricing tiers or plans inside our API endpoints or our pages to change this rate limit depending on the user's plan. If you have any questions, like always, hit me down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.